Hello everyone, this is Juan Bloisi with Washington Interpreters, and I have more relevant information for you as an interpreter today. In this video, I'll talk about phantom job requests reported by interpreters via the On The Spot app from SOCI. I'll show you images and concerns regarding this issue. Now let's get started. And as always, please feel free to pause this video at any time in order to read the information on the screen. A fellow interpreter shared this image with me. Here you can see activity from the On The Spot app on September 3rd, earlier this month. This interpreter schedule had two five-hour appointments starting at the same time, 7 a.m. at the same location, but with different job numbers. What's weird about this is that both appointments appear to be in progress simultaneously. Now, the interpreter here said she didn't accept any of these appointments, but they appeared as completed later in the day on her schedule. Unfortunately, this is not an isolated case. I keep receiving many emails from interpreters reporting the same issue. As you can see in this image, this interpreter is reporting how jobs he never accepted appear on his schedule as assigned and completed. The interpreter continues to say that when checking out of a no-show appointment, he's usually forced to call or email SOCI to notify them so that they can free up his schedule in order to be able to accept jobs during that time. That's another huge inconvenience, added to the fact that we still do not have a reject button on the app to give back appointments. But this issue with phantom appointments appearing on everyone's schedule is also happening to me. What you see here is an appointment that I accepted for September 11 from 12.45 p.m. to 5.15 p.m. And I want you to see what happened on my schedule that day. The first thing that I want you to notice here is this appointment on my schedule at 8.45 a.m. for three and a half hours. I never accepted this appointment, but it appears to be completed on my schedule. Later on the same day, you can see another appointment appearing as completed, but at 1.30 p.m. for one hour and 15 minutes. This is another appointment that I never accepted and that appears as completed on my schedule. Now, here's what's interesting about this situation. Do you remember the appointment I accepted for four hours and 30 minutes starting at 12.45 p.m. on that day? Well, as you can see in this image, I took a picture of that appointment while in progress that day. Right below my appointment in progress, you can see the appointment I showed you in the image before, the one at 1.30 p.m. This one appears to have been completed for one hour and 15 minutes. Do you see what's going on here? Do you understand the issue here? How could I have completed an appointment in Puyallup that started at 1.30 p.m. for one hour and 15 minutes when you can clearly see that at that time I was in Issaquah from 12.45 p.m. at an appointment that was still in progress for four hours and 30 minutes? This is very suspicious. Does Ellen and I know about this? Because... The SOCI company is clearly fabricating these appointments out of thin air and assigning them as completed to many interpreters. What if the SOCI company is doing this in order to hide how many appointments they are not covering? Or does Ellen and I know SOCI is not covering these appointments but decided to turn a blind eye to the situation? Which one is it? Whatever the situation is, Ellen and I has not responded to any of these concerns. This is another issue added to the long list of problems with this company since it started on June 17th. And because the Wolfsey Union has been a public relations company for both Sosi and LNI, instead of holding LNI accountable, interpreters have decided to go on to the news to raise awareness of our situation and the lack of pay from Sosi and LNI. After not being paid for two months, we decided to reach out to community outlets to get some help and pressure LNI to do something about this. We want to thank Jaime Mendez News for giving us a platform to raise awareness about these issues, as you can see here. I would also like to thank Rick Sennett from MLT News, which is community news for Mount Lake Terrace. 
Mr. Sinnott published an article on their website highlighting our situation, and I am glad he decided to interview me and other interpreters. He did a fantastic job. And thanks to the collective effort of several concerned interpreters, we were able to get Cascade PBS News to cover our story. Cascade PBS investigative reporter Liz Giordano interviewed me and other interpreters to share our situation with a bigger audience. The whole article describing our situation since June 17th was published on Cascade PBS's website on September 16th. I was able to share all of the documents, public records requests, and images in my possession regarding this situation, and the reporter did an excellent job informing the public. The article starts by discussing the lawsuit from Wolfsey filed on May 30th, earlier this year. Now, mind you, this lawsuit could have been filed three years ago when self-insured companies stopped paying interpreting works, but the union didn't want to spend any money on lawyers. You know how that is. Now, if you read my emails or watch my videos, you know that Washington Interpreters filed a complaint against Stella and I on April 4th, earlier this year, addressing the lack of payment from self-insured companies. That's when Wolfsey leaders decided to do something about it because we beat them to the punch, so they needed to save face with interpreters. Liz Giordano from Cascade PBS also reached out to Marisa Gilio, the CEO of Interpreting Works, as you can see here. Marisa said that self-insured companies also failed to pay them for interpretation services. So if they didn't pay Interpreting Works, then Interpreting Works could not pay interpreters. You can also see here how the union's director of communications said that LNI has the power to force these companies to pay and treat interpreters with respect. It's funny how the union promised interpreters timely payments, respect, and many benefits, but they refused to hold LNI accountable while getting no respect and no benefits for interpreters. The reporter continues to highlight how many interpreters have had to borrow money and max out their credit cards in order to help their financial situation and that complaints to the new company and LNI are often ignored because all LNI has been saying to interpreters is to keep waiting. Now, here you can see how Magda Enriquez is saying that she's owed about $3,000 from June to late August. The reporter also accurately stated that most interpreters have only received partial wages for work done over the past three months. Even though our situation is nowhere near close to being fixed or solved, I am glad that many courageous interpreters are waking up, not waiting for the Wolfsey Union to do something for them, and taking it to the news to apply pressure to LNI and SOCI so that they decide to do something about this situation. Because even though LNI and SOCI still owe so much money to interpreters, they have received many complaints from interpreters and providers in the form of phone calls and emails and a lot of pressure from news organizations. What you see in this image is Christy Miller from LNI reaching out to select interpreters. LNI decided to conduct a usability test or user acceptance test of the scheduling system. An interpreter decided to share this image with me. LNI is also offering these interpreters $100 Amazon gift cards for their participation. That's fine, I guess, but I do have a few questions about this. Because these kinds of tests are conducted before an implementation, so they should have done this before SOCI started. So why now? So all of a sudden, LNI decided to improve the effectiveness of the portal three months after the fact and so much pain? That's because now they're getting pressure from the community and news organizations. And what will they do with the data they get from this test? They're saying they want to improve the system's effectiveness. But what if LNI says that interpreters participating in the test didn't find anything wrong with it? Will this test be like a guided survey with guiding questions to get the answers they want from interpreters, just like Wolfsey does? Are they going to tell us we're crazy and we have to just be patient again? Shouldn't this be an opportunity for LNI to really see how messed up the system is and consider bringing back interpreters? interpreting works, or at least start the bidding process again to get another company. Because, 
as you can see in this image, the Washington Federation of State Employees Union became certified to represent LNI interpreters on September 14th last year. At the time, Interpreting Works had fixed many of the issues they had before, and we had a better experience with the app and the job distribution. We were also getting paid on time, excluding self-insured jobs, of course. But WOFC leaders, as you know, decided they didn't want Interpreting Works anymore, so they influenced LNI to go with another company. It's been a year so far since Wolfsey is the union representing LNI interpreters. They promised so many things. But please, ask yourself this question. Have you had better working conditions since Wolfsey became the union for LNI interpreters? Hmm, let's see. After one year with Wolfsey as your union, this is the state of our profession. Wolfsey Local 1671 leaders refuse to bargain for the contract that you can benefit from now. They have failed to get mileage reimbursement for interpreters. They have failed to get any payment for no-shows and late cancellations for interpreters now. They have failed to get any pay rate increases for now. They influenced LNI to replace interpreting works with SOCI, forcing another tough transition, and you're not getting paid for three months. After that, they have failed to make SOCI and LNI pay interpreters on time. To top it all off, WOFC union leaders have allowed LNI to continue paying interpreters less money for video and phone appointments, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever because your quality as an interpreter does not diminish when covering these appointments. Remote appointments are actually harder to cover and require interpreters to invest money in equipment and a reliable internet connection. But Wolfsey geniuses don't care about that, do they? After one year, the Wolfsey union has done nothing for you. They have nothing to show for it, but they have definitely made things worse. Because Wolfsey leaders only do what's best for them, not for you. They are responsible for the situation we're in right now. But when their efforts hurt interpreters, then they want to portray themselves as the problem solvers for the problems they created themselves instead of taking responsibility. You see, they wanted to create this crisis so then they can create the need for a savior. You see, they have no power dealing with LNI and LNI doesn't listen to them. They cannot even get a contract going on right now. They are incompetent and money hungry. That's it. In reality, you deserve a better union. This is not a union worthy of your union dues or your attention. But it is your right to opt out of Wolfsey and stop paying union dues. Go to optouttoday.com forward slash 1671 to do so and keep your hard-earned money. In closing, I don't want you to lose hope. Yes, many of us have been looking for other jobs because... We cannot just sit here waiting for something to happen. But at the same time, this is the profession that we love. And we should be able to keep doing what we love. In the meantime, keep contacting Sosie and LNI directly. Hold them accountable yourself. Keep reaching out to news outlets to share our situation and raise awareness to this issue. I will keep informing you the best way I can for as long as I'm able to. See you in the next video.